That, that's me. Your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Adam Lyons, the dating coach, founder of AskTheDatingCoach.com and CEO of seven different businesses. I call that a serial entrepreneur. You've been featured on Steve Harvey, The Today Show, The New York Post, and many more. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to have this time with you. Today, we're going to be talking about dating. And you've been teaching for over 12 years the art of dating and attraction. Yep. And you say that some people that just aren't ready to improve their relationships or dating life. Well, for sure. I, I mean, I think so many people, not only are they not ready, they don't even know what they want. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet somebody and I'm like, you know, what are you, what are you looking for in a relationship? And it, what they want is actually things they should be getting from themselves. You know, they want someone to motivate them or to, to help them achieve their dreams. And I'm like, yo, that's your job. <laughs> you know what? I totally agree with that. A lot of people will say, I've got this whole list of somebody that I know exactly what I want in a person. And I ask them to read it off and I say, now how are you going to keep that person happy? Yep. They don't Absolutely. realize that it's, that they have the, the responsibility of, of being the list of the other person as well. And I think that too much we try and focus on bringing this person into our life that we are not prepared for. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a genuine issue. And, you know, so many people, they, they just think the partner is going to solve all their problems. So right. it becomes the immediate fix. Um, yeah, how, how familiar are you with Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Just, uh, you know, a, a, a well-founded uh, theory of human desire that, first of all, we have immediate safety. You know, if somebody is pointing a gun at your head, you don't really care about where you sleep that night. Um, but once your immediate safety is taken care of, you start caring about shelter and food, and that matters more than anything. And then the next step is your relationship. It's love, affection, touching, and caring. After that is when you have success and enlightenment and all these other elements. So, you know, Beyond our basic needs, um, we really get to relationships very quickly. And most people, because of that natural human desire, for over 100,000 years that's been our desire, Mm -hmm. which is immediate safety, shelter and food, procreate. But in modern society, it all makes, almost makes sense to do uh, you know, immediate safety, shelter and food, success and personal life, and then relationship. And because of that disconnect with how fast our societies evolved compared to how far we have evolved as, as mammals, people get confused. And so they feel they can't reach success until they have that perfect relationship. And that's just not true. So when I, when I started thinking about this, um, I thought that if somebody wasn't uh, like financially stable, doesn't it change who they date? Like the more stable that the person is, um, they're going to attract probably somebody who's who's more uh, along the same lines with them. But also on the other side of that, if they're insecure because they're not financially stable in their world, have the sense of security, then they're going to probably think that they're out of somebody's league, seemingly so. Is that yeah, but again, we could just remove the word financial because people, when you say financial, people tend to start reading in gold diggers and sugar daddies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You can just say the word secure. If you're not secure in yourself, then that's where the problem is. I know many people who have a basic nine to five job that doesn't pay a lot of money that are in very happy relationships and they're very right. happy where they are in life because they're secure. They, they love what they do for a living. They love who they are. No problem whatsoever. On the other hand, I've definitely had clients who earn eight figures a year who are very insecure about who they are and therefore their relationships flounder. And, you know, that that's what I find fascinating about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm not specifically saying it should be one way or the other. It's more that you should just be aware that you will lean towards getting a relationship before you fix your own problems. And it's easier if you can fix your own problems first, but not everyone can do that. And some of us find ourselves in transitory relationships where, you know, now I know that I've got someone that loves me, even though they're not perfect, I can now focus on my success. And then that relationship is essentially just a transitionary relationship that helps move you to the next level. And we do this all the time. That's why there's yes. casual dating mm-hmm. while people work out who they're actually going to end up with. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so the security of somebody, no, so the messages, you guys, the, the listeners, you do not have to be um, making a certain income. It's just having that feeling of security of knowing where you are in life and that dating somebody isn't going to solve the problem in your life or, or, or bring more love. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, on, on that point, I'll give you, like, my, my top bonus tip, which is if, if you have a pattern of dating the same kind of person, mm -hmm. no matter whether you find that person attractive or not, you should absolutely date the exact opposite at least once. Because I have seen time and time again when someone has a pattern of dating a certain type of person, the minute they date the exact opposite is when they go, oh, this is so much better. But they didn't allow themselves to do that because they had a perception of what they were attracted to versus actually learning what they really, really wanted. Right, stepping out into what it is that they really want versus living a life of, of uh, being... Uh, preconditioned, I guess, in, in relationships. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly a good way of wording it. Like, the people that are like, like, I, I get guys and women all the time that will do, like, a dating app, and I'm like, you know, what do you like doing? They're like, oh, you know, I like walks on the beach. I'm like, do you live near a beach? And they're like, well, no, I don't live near a beach. <laughs> I'm like, well, how often do you walk by a beach? And they're like, well, I like the idea of it. I'm like, great, and you're going to end up dating someone who likes the idea of it, but actually wants to be doing it. Great. That's that's a great point to, um, yeah. to put out there for sure. Um, you also say you give you 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 touch on a, a couple of different reasons why somebody wouldn't be able to um, that you wouldn't be able to necessarily help them. And one of the ones thing one of the ones that you mentioned is if they believe that they are helpless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, some people want to suck. A friend of mine made a post the other day that was like, if the word shouldn't appears, um, you're probably dealing with somebody who's negative. Right. So if someone's like, well, shouldn't it be like this? Or, you know, um, you shouldn't have to change. The minute the word shouldn't comes in, you're often dealing with somebody who has already decided that things are stuck the way they are. Because, like, their idea of shouldn't is they've got an impression of how it should be. And that is very hard to fix. Whereas when you have someone that's like, I don't know why, or I want to know why, or I want to improve, those people you can you can fix instantly. I mean, I've, I've had people turn around in 48 hours. Wow. You um, mentioned that if somebody believes if, if uh, they're overweight or a specific race or being quote-unquote ugly, that they have zero chance to improve their dating life, that is something that you you can't work with because it's in their belief system it's their core belief about their perception in this world that you can't change they've got to be able to change how they see themselves yeah if they believe that's an issue it's an issue it isn't actually an issue for anyone else it's right. their perception of it so um for example i've got a, a student right now um he's 480 pounds he spent the last five years of his life believing he wouldn't find love Within three days of just following our basic processes, I'm not going to say found love because that would be an exaggeration. It isn't. But he's definitely increased the amount of women that he's socializing with already. That's and that's brilliant. within just a few days. Yeah. Because he no longer views his weight as a problem. And he now sees that there are women out there that like the idea of having a very – because he's, he's strong. He's physically strong. He's just overweight. But the idea of a big, cuddly guy mm -hmm. that will protect them mm -hmm. and stand up for them against mm -hmm. people that are being assholes, they love that. And I was like, yeah, you're not going to date every single woman that likes the idea of being in your presence because you are a big protector. But you will find somebody through that group. If somebody isn't willing to interact with people in real life, so this, I, you know, relates to this guy because he probably had his perception of himself and not willing so much to go out and participate in life going on around him. But if they're not willing to interact, then those people are more withdrawn, um, are isolating themselves from activities. Uh 100%. Also, their negativity makes people want to avoid them. Right. So let me ask you this about online dating and, and this point in particular. Are you for online dating or are you more like in person, out and about? I'm for. 
absolutely everything. Okay. Like in every way. I, I think you should do online dating. I think you should meet people out and about. I think you should develop a healthy social life. I think you should straight up reach out to your friends and let them know you're single and get them to hook you up with blind dates. I think if you're single, you should be doing everything. And then the thing that you enjoy the most will be the one that gets you the most results. And then you can focus on that. And what do you think about speed dating? I've heard of that. I- yeah, I think speed dating is absolutely great. There's, there's actually a method. Um, scientists have discovered a method that significantly increases your chance of speed dating. Really? Um, when you, yeah, you, you've got two minutes. Spend the first minute arguing. Oh, wow. Okay. There you go, yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah. one, you want one minute of arguing. Now, of course, it's, it's friendly arguing, right. not serious arguing. But it's one minute of friendly arguing followed by one minute of being friendly. And you'll stand out from everyone else. And they'll want to match with you because they'll want to know where the conflict came from and why it went away so quickly. Because okay. that's the whole purpose of speed dating is just to connect. So you do this art of attraction. How does this work? Because that really stands out to me versus just dating. It's the art of attraction. I really like that. Thanks. So, um, so a good example would be like what we we're just talking about with the speed dating. One of the things that you like when you first meet someone, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Mm-hmm. In that first impression, you have to stand out. You have to be different. So you know that in most speed dating scenarios, everybody's going to stand there. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll I'll instead sit down with a challenge, and I'm like, all right, you have three. You have the two minutes right now to convince me why I shouldn't walk straight out of here, and get 12 donuts once this is all over because I'm craving it right now. (laughs) Like, I'm feeling it. Like, tell me why I shouldn't do that. And and it instantly creates this fun, unique scenario. It breaks Um, down uh, the pressure, actually, probably, of sitting there having to think that you got to answer all these questions and answer them correctly or you're not going to fit in this person's um, scenario of a a person that they want to date. And having the same conversation over and over again. Or, or like, I'll be like, listen, I really, when I was younger, wanted to be a rap artist. I've realized that my inability to rap has held me back. Um, I'd love it if you could just judge me. I don't even care if we date. But just, like, you know, tell me how bad is my rapping. And then, <laughs> then I'll just go straight into something. And, and we're just sitting there laughing. And they'll, you know, they'll say to you, like, really? You have two minutes and that's what you chose to speak about. And I was like, I have one goal here. And that's for you to want to hang out with me again in the future. Whether we date or not, I, we're not going to get to know each other in two minutes and they'll be like okay fine you win let's meet up and talk because they want it's different adam since i have gotten to know you i have learned you do so many things and now i'm convinced do you, do you rap as well because i would not be surprised <laughs> no but when i was in my early 20s um rap battling was a big thing in the uk uh-huh. um and so i had a friend of mine who was a famous freestyle rap artist and i would travel with him because we used to play video games together mm. and so if i wanted to play video games i'd have to go with him to his concerts watch him perform and then we'd go and play video games and so we would sit in his room and he'd be like you gotta try it and i i literally cannot do it like i, I suck <laughs> but I, I randomly got good at coming up with rhymes that, like basic level rhymes we have to get good rhymes but like like poetry more than more than rapping but freestyling <laughs> and and now i use it for my kids i sit and i sing to them and i invent songs based on the words that they say so my kids will be like you know hanging out and like one of my my children will be like you know red and i'm like you know uh, my kid likes the color red especially when he's about to go to bed i just do silly things like that and my kids love it and everyone's like how are you so good at rhyming and i was like well it's my failed rap career <laughs> <laughs> when you rap does your accent go away <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so when, funny, it those rhymes. <laughs> when, when i when i'm listening to, to to rap music at home i tend to listen to more of the uk style of rapping mm-hmm. so so it does tend to be a little bit more british rap which is is its whole it's wow whole you got to turn me on to that because i've not heard for yeah, sure it's, it's pretty good there's some good stuff i like dizzy rascal he's like a an older guy but he's he's pretty good okay noted so you talk also about the 16 human senses Mm-hmm. yeah so you know we think about like what is attraction but most people never break it down to its components like they'll be like oh just be more confident okay well if you smell bad and you have bad breath um <laughs> let's see how, how well confidence does for you right so mm-hmm. Instead, I get people to, like, just look at the core five senses and ask yourself, across these five senses, you know, how how attractive are you? So we can start with, you know, looks. 
it's not about beauty, but did you do your hair? Did you shave? Did you iron your clothes? You know, did you did you put your makeup on, right? right. It's that basic thing. Did you did you go out to the best you could in terms of your physical looks? And then we can go into things like like smell. Do you smell good? Like across all of your body. One of the worst things that can ever happen is someone takes their pants off and you put your head between their legs and you're like, oh my oh, god. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be there, right? So, but like, that's the thing that you, you actually have to teach people. Like, so, so we do. Like, I can guarantee anybody that I ever go on a date with, if I take my pants off and you put your head in between my legs, it's going to smell good, right? Because I am going to shower before I take anybody to bed. That's actually one of my number one rules. If I go to somebody's house or they go to mine, I'm going to shower as soon as I get in. And I'm like, hey, do you mind if I jump in your shower? And it's cool because it sets up, they know that I'm planning on having sex with them. <laughs> so you know it's coming no but i yeah. love that you say that because not a lot of people talk about these types of uh of things taking care of yourself and a lot of people don't know they probably haven't even thought about it. the listeners right now probably like what did he just say but it is actually really real yeah it's it's killer and like and it's cool because somebody can say to you, you know what we've only just met i don't think that's appropriate you're like no problem whatsoever and then i know they're not interested and we just dealt with that nice and early but the reality is I've never had anyone say no. Because <laughs> if you're doing everything right and you turn up at the house, you've already been making out, you're like, do you mind if I jump in the shower? And they go, yeah. And what I'll do is I'll always do it. I'll walk to the bathroom door. I'll look at them. I'm like, come with me. You want to join? Now you're offering yeah. them to come in and now there's no reason for them not to take you up Bingo. on your offer for them to feel, have the confidence of getting ready to take their clothes off and smell good too. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Because again, if my head's going to go in between their legs, it's the only way I can guarantee it's going to smell good because not everyone follows my training. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, right. so this is, and that's just, that's just looks and smell. So then we've got things like, um, like touch. Like, do you know how to genuinely touch somebody? I mean, I mean, so many guys, a really common uh, complaint I get from men is they're like, I'm under endowed. That's like a common guy thing. Okay, or, let's talk about or, that. Yeah, or I don't get as rigid as I should, right? And these are like common guy problems. I'm like, man, you know what? I know a lot of women that only date women, and I have never, ever heard one of my same-sex women friends who's in a relationship with a same-sex woman turn around and be like, oh, yeah, the lack of a penis is what's ruining my sex life with my partner. That's because a real there good are, point. Right. There are so many other ways to pleasure a woman. And most women say that women are better in bed than men and they don't have a penis. So it's because you know, they, they know their way around a woman's body. So getting having that confidence that you're the size of your penis and whatever's going on there is not actually going to prevent you from pleasing a woman. That's a very good point. I never really thought about it, looked at it from that point of view, but that's very true. If a woman can please a woman and she doesn't have a, a penis, then a man should be able to please a woman equally. And Thank keep you. her. I, right, exactly. And then along that, that line, that, that train of thought, I made sure that I know how to do this. Like I have trained with, with women. I have worked with women. I've, I've had a very large number of sexual partners and I'm always learning like what works in different parts of the body and how to do it to the point that I get referral sex which is the weirdest thing in the world you, you ever heard of this no talk to me about this referral sex is probably my favorite thing in the world it's when there'll be a woman that i know who was dating someone who then separates from the someone and then will come up to me and say hey you slept with insert name a friend that we both know i'm like yeah and she goes she kept saying how good in bed you were she recommended that to get over my breakup i have sex with you <laughs> And I would, I get I can see how this would be your, your, one of your favorites. Oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> I, I get this all the time. Women are like, hey, can I sleep with you while I'm single, while I'm dating people, so that I don't sleep with the wrong guy, and I'll just have sex with you until I meet someone I like. I'm like, yep, yeah, no problem whatsoever, let's do it. And then we'll go out to dinner, and I've now got a new, you know temporary partner that I'm dating for a while while they get on their feet and find their true love. We're going to have a second interview based on sex and I cannot wait for that interview <laughs> as well. So anybody's got that to look forward to. Um, <laughs> this also caught my attention about the fine line between passion and fighting. Mm -hmm. What is that line? Talk about that because I this triggers something. This is great. 
So one of the uh, the senses that people have, so most humans think they only have five senses, but we actually have like 16, potentially even more. Mm-hmm. And so there's things like the sense of temperature or the sense of tension when you walk in a room. You could look at a few people in a room and you know when there's tension, when something is either sexual tension or aggressive tension, and you can tell the difference. We have a sense of tension. In the same way that if I held a piece of string, I would know whether it was tense or relaxed. And um, passion and fighting are really two sides of the same coin. Um, A good example of this is you can't actually be angry at someone that you don't care about. So, uh, you know, I, I always give the example, if you were walking through New York City and a homeless person screamed out to you, your outfit makes you look like trash and you suck, you would just be like, okay, crazy homeless person, and you would keep walking. But right. if that was someone you loved, you would be livid. And that's all because in order for us to get angry, we have to care about what is being said to us. And there, there's so much about this. Even if a stranger says something, most of the time, if it hurts, it's because it's striking too close to home. And there's probably some element of truth in what they're saying, which is why it hurts. Because most of the time, if I came up to you and I was like, you know, your your blue hair makes you look stupid. You'd be like, I don't even have blue hair. It, 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 I just don't care about anything you're saying. But if you'd really thought about getting blue hair one day or you used to have blue hair, suddenly that hurt. That might be a little bit more painful. If, if one of your biggest compliments you've ever received is your hair looks so dark that it almost looks blue, that could trigger you. So it's the closer to truth and the closer to personal that we get is where fighting occurs. And for a successful relationship, you want passion. And it is far too easy for people to mistake uh, aggression and passion and have a relationship packed with aggression and fighting and believe that's a good relationship because the tension feels very similar. But actually, that's a destructive form and they really should be focusing on getting passion instead. So if you just, because perception is your reality, if there are couples out there, I mean, all, all couples, anybody, but if you are if you even just kind of change the way that you look at um, this type of communication, we'll call it, not necessarily fighting, Um, then if you looked at it like this is something that's passion, passionate between us that we're discussing, or this is bringing out the passion between us because there's this difference, but we're both passionate about each other, instead of fighting, then it would probably change the tone of how people actually fight or communicate. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Is that yeah, totally. So I, I've got like a few things I tell people. Like number one, anytime you're arguing with your significant other, you should periodically remind them you love them. As if you just walked in the room and that. you were a completely different person. It changes the whole dynamic of a fight. So you're in the middle of saying something, pause. It's got to come from you because if you interrupt them, you're an asshole, right? So pause and be like, hey, I, I just want to take an aside and I just want to tell you something. I love you. And I'm, I'm so sad that we're having this disconnect right now. And I want to let you know that part of me just wants to reach across, hug you, and tell you how much I love you. And while I can sense that there is obviously a disconnect here and we're going to have to resolve it, I just need you to know that I love you. I respect you. Um, it's so crazy that we're heated right now, but you're never hotter than when you're angry. I'm so sorry. Okay, time in. Oh, my God. And- I love that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, they'll they'll laugh. The whole dynamic changes. Right. And I was going to ask you um, how you trigger attraction, but that right there seems like it's going to, I mean, I'm going to assume that that would be one way that you can trigger attraction because you have a list of how to trigger attraction. Mm -hmm. Is that one of them in the middle of 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 a fight like that, that you sit there and say that and that triggers? Absolutely. But one of the biggest ones is knowing Um, Like being confident enough to state something like that because so many people are afraid of losing that they won't have the 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 confidence or the bravery to to break something like that and step out and say wait a minute just so you know this is how I feel and when people talk about confidence. They, they, they never really explain what it is, and people get confused between confidence and bravado, right? Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. pretend that I'm really, look how great I am, I can do anything. That's not attractive. What's attractive is actually being willing to fail. No, absolutely. I, I mm-hmm. totally agree. Um, yeah. How do you get someone to crave you? Because you even teach this. So, yeah, getting someone to crave you, uh, is is an art, and it really all comes down to getting that we crave that which we put effort into, 
So therefore, if you want someone to crave you, they have to put effort in. And this is where people get confused. They go, well, how does, how do I get that person to put effort into me? And actually, that comes from being willing to lose them while inviting them to take that step. So we can go back to the shower example. Okay. If I'm at somebody's house and I say, hey, I'm going to get in a shower. If I just go in the shower, I don't give them an opportunity to take an action to chase me. Whereas if I stand in the doorway and I say, do you want to get in the shower with me? I'm not saying, please get in the shower with me, which would be needy and begging. I'm not saying you should get in the shower with me, which is controlling and overwhelming. I'm inviting. And I like to think of it as Aladdin uh, from the Disney movie Aladdin, where he's always holding his hand out. Do you trust me? And in almost everything I do, I'll, re I'll say a, a very similar phrase, like, do you trust me? And if I meet somebody in a bar and I'm going to go outside to get some fresh air, which is a good opportunity to make out with somebody, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air. Do you want to come with me? Do you trust me? Let's go. And every time they make the choice, because I'm inviting them to make a choice. I'm not making it for them. Every time they make the choice, they're taking a step. And it's like when I get somebody's phone number, I actually never take their phone number. I give them mine. And I'm like, hey, I'd love to talk to you again, but do me a favor. Um, if you don't enjoy this, if you don't want it, don't just, don't just take my phone number. Like, only take it if you're going to send me a message. I was like, because I'm, I'm big enough and ugly enough. You're good. <laughs> Say it. You're yeah, real good. <laughs> because I'm, I'm willing to lose them. I don't care. I'm like, look, I'm big enough and ugly enough for you to say no. So if, you, if you're not interested, just tell me to my face. Like, and I won't be offended. And that way, I'll go and meet somebody else tonight. I was like, but I like you. And I'd like to hang out with you again. So if you like me, take my number and send me a message right now with something funny. Right. It makes you instantly intriguing it's the give and take away and and then of course you're left you leave them with the choice 100 percent. hi everyone this is mj mangus your host are you looking for answers in your own life something from your past holding you back a bad relationship or are you wanting to do something you've always wanted to do anything that you're wanting to change in your life will require you to step into your power over the past eight years, I've been guiding people into walking their own empowered path as their personal power coach. The impact that coaching can have on all areas of your life is priceless, and it works as soon as you are ready. The truth is, you hold all the power to unlock what you want to overcome or become. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to be your power coach so that together we can transform your life and bridge the gap between where you are now and where you want to be. Please email me at loveandliespodcast at gmail.com for more information. Sessions are 100% confidential and absolutely no judgment. Discover, unlock, and overcome what is holding you back from your fullest potential. I look forward to working with you. Now, let's get back to what brought us together. This episode of Love and Lies. So, when you teach the art of attraction and dating, you're actually teaching them the steps to go from being able to put themselves out there to being able to uh, a tr a trigger attraction and to be able to follow through all the way into love and, and maintaining a relationship. Yeah, every single step. So we have a ton of free material, which is what we use AskTheDatingCoach.com for. But the whole point is, if you don't want to pay us money, you don't have to. There's a ton of free material that we've created you can go and enjoy. If you want help, and that's like where our company makes money, it's from the people that have looked at the free material and they say, you know what, I really need someone to, to push me through it, right? It's like right. a gym instructor. Right, and it, trainer. We have a, yeah, exactly. And we have a full six-month program where we give somebody four different experts. One of them is going to be an expert on fashion and their style. Somebody's going to help them be funny and have good communication. Someone's going to help them with sex. And someone's going to help them develop a social life. And between those things, when you've got fashion, style, and, you know, you smell good and all that good stuff, and then, you know, you're good in bed and you're confident in conversation and you have a great social life, it tends to get very easy. And we guide them through and give them all those things over six months. And there's over a 100 lessons that we take them through, like actual lessons, like think like school with exams. Mm -hmm. And we make sure they understand every step. 
everything from like we'll we'll look at the individual words somebody uses in a conversation and help them have understand the meaning of what it means when someone says that. Um, we get them to we teach them basic photography so they can take good pictures for online dating. I mean, we we take them through everything. And uh, by the end, there's nothing they need. So they can go from geek to total stud just just from oh, yeah. their interaction. So it is possible to create the flying sparks with someone that they're attracted to that, that does not come naturally. If somebody sees somebody across the room and they really want to approach them and that other person hasn't even noticed that they're even in the room, it is totally possible working with you that they would be able to create, they'll know exactly what to do to create the sparks, period. Not even. Yeah, not even a question. In fact, I know you're going to relate to this because I know you're a big Conor McGregor fan. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, people felt that the winner in a fight was the biggest, stronger person. Now, it's generally accepted that fighting is a science, and if you know the steps, you can beat somebody, and size and physical strength don't matter as much. That's right. It's the same with dating. Dating is a science. And if you know all the steps and know what you're doing, you can come up against somebody who is richer, naturally better looking, and technically has, quote, unquote, all the advantage, you know, got a 12-inch penis or whatever else that they want. And I'll run rings around them. Like, I, I, it's funny. I tell every, every woman I'm with. Cause so you I, don't I, have a 12 inch penis. <laughs> wait, wait, just, I was just about to tell you. So, so I have an exactly average six inch penis. Like, that is exactly what it is. And sometimes I'll, I'll hang out and I'll meet somebody in a bar. And, uh, you know, I'll be talking about it. And we'll be talking about life or what have you. And I'll just casually throw in. I'm like, yeah, one of the hardest things uh, about life is when a woman tells me she wants a 12 inch penis. And I know I have to have sex with her twice. <laughs> and that's that's exactly it. and then they laugh and but it gets it out of the way it gets it out of the way early and you know and, and i would say i've never had a woman complain because the g-spot is located within two inches from the front of a vagina so as long as you've got two inches you can hit the g-spot and most of the time guys that have well endowed penis are trying to fill up everything inside her which is great and feels good and it's grazing against the g-spot but when you know what you're doing and you can lightly tap the g-spot and run circles around it with the end of your penis while holding her body and positioning her it's a different sexual experience that's what comes from you know you have a lot of experience with women you have a lot of sex and so like most of the time i'm not even using the entire length of my penis anyway because i'm really just using it to stimulate her g-spot and get her to have as many orgasms as she wants and then by the end of that she's like i don't understand like i just wanted more of you inside me and i couldn't i couldn't get all of you i was craving you and i actually hold myself out to, to to drive her wild and then at the end that's when i'll get you know what i want but it's that knowledge of, of the of the human body. And it goes the other way as well. You know, like it's like understanding how to please a man as well. And most women don't know that. So. Right, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so somebody out there that um, has a smaller penis, they learning these steps, they will approach a woman completely differently. Not Your penis is probably the last thing that you're actually thinking about once you go through your services. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it always comes up. Like, well, I would say always, because I actually, we've had the opposite problem. We had a student once whose penis was, um, it was Too the big. Width, uh, yeah, it was the width of two Coke cans stuck together. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a problem that he couldn't use condoms, so no one would have sex with him because of unprotected. And every woman he had sex with was in pain. Right. So he actually was the hardest student we ever had because it was just too big. Um, but we found, like, once a guy with who is less endowed understands female anatomy and realizes what they should be doing, which is really going for the G-spot anyway, rather than trying to fill her up, it's it changes the game because so, they have women phone them up and be like, yo, that was really good. Can we do that again? Right, and then the woman feels comfortable and she knows that there's, she's going to be pleased. Uh, and so a man that has a two-inch penis has the same problem as a man that has a two-can size of a penis. The same problem. Yeah, they need to focus, and, and it's really just about understanding, it should be focusing on female pleasure, right? That, right. As a male, and, and as a woman, I believe you should be focusing on male pleasure. And if we bring two people together, and the guy's focusing on female pleasure, and she's focusing on male pleasure, that's a great bedroom experience. Absolutely. As opposed to some kind of weird um, you know, car show scenario where everyone's trying to pose in the sexiest way while jackhammering, right? Which just isn't going to be good for anyone. Um, and, and again, this level of understanding how sex works makes you feel far more confident when you're talking to a woman. Like, so I know by the time I drop my clothes, I'm completely naked and she's seeing, you know, my six inch flaccid penis. Um, 
that I, I don't feel ashamed because I know what I'm about to do and I know she's going to love it. So you're also, though, stimulating her mind, her, her imagination, fantasy, and so now she can't even resist you because she's got to know what the hell this is going to be like. Right, exactly, and it's even better, again, and this, you know, moves into polyamory a little bit, but obviously I'm, I'm polyamorous, I'm in open relationships, um, most of the women that have been with me talk to the other women I'm with, and, you know, we'll often have, like, you know, multiple person sex, I'd say threesomes, but, you know, often it's four or five, like, you know, me and, me being the only guy, and in those scenarios, the women are all talking about me like I'm, like, you know, a sex toy, but it, that that helps because they all will then talk to each other and they'll refer other people to me and be like, "Oh, you got to date this guy. You got to have sex with this guy," and it all just builds. And you can take there, four or five women and please each one of them back to back, just simply understanding and knowing their body and knowing exactly right. what to do. And you don't even have to use your penis to do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. With with a pair of hands and you know using them and just being creative and also like when you're having that many people you kind of want to orchestrate and help them pleasure each other and that's an element to it and a large part of it is understanding that for some of these women that might be their first same-sex experience um one of one of i have many girlfriends that only date women and they'll often say to me yes for for women who this is their first time they like to have a penis in the room because it means they're not gay and they're like <laughs> even if they don't touch it they just want to know there's one in the room so they can justify it um and it, it helps them break down that social barrier that's been created um yeah, we're going to, I promise, listeners, we're going to do a, an entire episode on polyamory and, and sex life and all of that, and it's definitely coming. I'm really looking forward to that. Tell me, Adam, what do women want? Good question. Um, in my experience, different women want different things. Um, I would largely say that there's three key categories, um, and within those categories, there are subcategories. The thing that makes me good is I never uh, mass generalize. Um, so I'm always, like, analyzing somebody individually and working out what that individual person wants. And that's really the art of our dating style, is we look at someone as an individual, we break them down as an individual and work out what that individual person wants, and then actually, we don't match what they want. We're looking to see the match that we need. And if they're not the match, then we teach our students to move on to the next person, rather than trying to force it to work with that person. It's so important! Yep, it's so big. And people don't get it, because they will, like, yeah, they'll, they'll be like, oh, well, I went on a date with this person, I kind of liked them, so I'd better date them for the next 18 months. You're like, what? I think that they <laughs> think that love isn't going to come back around or something, that their people are so desperate for love or want love so bad that that they are willing to sell themselves short or, or settle for something that is a lot less than what they really want because they're afraid of letting that go. I agree. And they're not coming back around. Yeah, 100%. And like, you know, like I said, I don't believe polyamory is for everyone. Like, it definitely is for me, but it's not necessarily for everyone. And in those situations, that still doesn't mean that you're not going to find love. I still think you shouldn't jump into a relationship with anyone. Maybe casually date three or four people. You don't have to make out with them or have sex with them, but just to see the one that you actually get on with. Compare them to each other, as opposed to just compare the one person to everyone else you've ever dated. Because in that situation, you'll find, wow, I'm hanging out with five different people at different points, and I really like person B. And that's the one that I, I like. That's the one I should I should be trying with, as opposed to going through them one by one. Because if you're going to date five people for six months each, that's, you know, two and a half years of your life, as mm -hmm. opposed to you could date five people for three months at the same time, and then be like, okay, I really like person B. This is the one I'm going to have sex with, and I'm going to drop the others. And it's scary to do that because, yeah, you're going to have to break up with four people, but we're all adults, and you should be able to be like, look, I like you, and you'd make a great friend. <laughs> However, I've met somebody else, and this other person I just I feel I've got more chemistry with. It's not an attack on you. It's just this is a, this is a match that I really enjoy. So I was going to ask what men want, but it's just going to be the same answer as what women want. It's per, per person, and okay. What yeah. happens in a relationship that goes bad? Where, where, where do relationships go bad for people? Most of the time, relationships go bad because people are chasing a bad relationship they had before, mm -hmm. and they're trying, to they're trying to have that same relationship again. It broke for a reason, and they can't get back with their ex. Now they're looking for someone that's close to their ex, which, of course, only ends up repeating the same situation over and over again. Dear God, people, listen. That is so true. <laughs> Thanks. Also, another factor is um, our... Our view of love is often taught to us by our parents, the way they taught us love. If you had an unhealthy relationship with your parents, you actually have an unhealthy view of love. And you need to relearn what love is, and it is not 
what your parents gave you? In coaching, I always ask my clients, what were you taught love was? And they, a lot of people can't even answer that question or it's something dysfunctional. And they don't even realize that that is what they're living out in their life, in the reality. And that's their belief, what love is. And they've got to realize that this is a subconscious thought uh, and Absolutely. behavior. Absolutely. And they need, that needs to get broken. So, so that's like another key part that will get people to like, you know, to really learn. And like I said, and then we'll, we'll often try and get them to date someone that they would normally never date. Um, and they're always blown away. You know, like, uh, I got a, a very strong liberal friend of mine, and, uh, she's only dated liberal guys, and every liberal guy she's, guy she's ever dated, she's lost attraction for within three years. And I said to her, this is gonna be out there, but I really want you to date a Republican. And she's like, I can't. She's like, <laughs> I've got democratic views. She's like, I'm a vegan. I can't. Oh, and I'm God. like, listen, I re- just once, just go on a date with a guy. And guess who's getting married to a hunter from Virginia later on this year? Wow, really? I believe it. Yep, absolutely. It's what she, it's what she always wanted. She goes, I couldn't believe it. She, because the, the guys she was dating had the same views as her. She had nothing to teach them. She had nothing to change their way, and so she would get bored because she wanted to be able to share her viewpoints with someone that wasn't like, yeah, I know that already. And this guy from Virginia who's, who's been a Republican his whole life, you know, he's not going to become a vegan anytime soon, but she sure as hell got him to eat more vegetables than he normally eats. Was, was her boyfriend, her previous boyfriend, like her father? Her, well, funny enough, um, in her situation, they were. They were very you know, I believe it. Again, yes. that's yeah, more open-minded. Right, exactly, and that's typically how it goes down. But yeah, so that uh, yeah, completely, uh, completely went the other way. But she she loves this guy. Like it's such a good mix for her because um, this guy cares about her viewpoints. He loves her. He just has different viewpoints, and now both of them, you know, they're kind of a little bit more open. So it's funny. She went she went on a hunt with him, and I was like, you're a vegan, and she goes, well, you know what? This doesn't feel so bad. I don't mind when a lion eats a gazelle because it's part of the natural course. And she goes, you know, since dating this guy, he now only does bow hunting. He won't use guns. And she's like, and I, I kind of like that. Like, you know, it, it feels more natural. And, and actually, she's like, I, I'll accept that. People are out there reenacting their, their last five relationships. Uh, but learning from somebody is, uh, is super important that you get to teach the other person they get to teach you but if you have the same views on everything then you just agree and then you're basically just what hanging out with yourself and loving yourself and you you love them because they're more like you right and and it's nice but again not everyone wants it there is definitely a category of person that doesn't want that kind of change or they want the comfort of knowing that they're in an an allegiance with somebody um so it's super important for people to understand that because if they don't know what love is then and and when you when you discuss and realize what you were taught love was, then you can erase that completely, start from a whiteboard, and start creating what you want love to be. Yeah, correct. And this is why you know dating coaches exist. You know, um, there's a favorite quote of mine by Socrates, which is, "If your horse is sick, you can either go and ask everyone in the village what you should do, or you could go to a vet." And it <laughs> always makes sense to go to a vet. And it's the same thing. Like people go to their friends, and all their friends will do is share with them either what they read online or what they themselves have done. But a dating coach, we've got so much more experience. And I can look at someone, work with them, and identify what they specifically want, and I'll tell them things that they've never heard before, because I know that scenario, because I remember somebody from 11 years ago that had a similar situation, and the way we fixed it was by getting them to do this one particular thing that now works perfectly. And, you know, that's the thing. When you have that much experience of helping people with dating, you realize it is a pattern, and there are similarities, but everyone's also unique. And you're pulling from that experience and, you know, and obviously our own studying and combining it. You also offer on your website, um, askthedatingcoach.com, three ways to keep your relationship sexual and not break up. So there's a lot of things in there that people can prove and pull from that are in relationships. This is really important, I think, because especially with our world nowadays and the external conflicts and and pressures um that's playing a part in our bedroom with our partners right now absolutely and you know in general when you have increased stress 
you increase a chemical called cortisol. And cortisol is not only linked to an increase in health issues, but it's a massive de decrease in sex drive. And, you know, we're seeing this when uh, during quarantine, there were so many people that were breaking up and having fights. And, you know, there were all sorts of issues because people weren't connecting correctly. In contrast, in my own relationship, I went from strength to strength to strength because we instigated set date nights where even at home we would sit and watch movies. Um, and like I mentioned, we're polyamorous, so you know we, we date other women and we were actually watching movies together via FaceTime. So we were still networking and connecting with you know someone that we were dating in California and someone else that we were dating uh, in another town in Texas. Um, and that's huge because you're still getting that quality time in and when all the rest around you is all stress and pain, but when you're together, it's love and warmth and caring, it, you're, the relationship blossoms. I will admit my relationship got stronger as well. It, I love that. It was beautiful for us and still is and, and proves that uh, we're very happy with each other and where we are at. And, and uh, you know, nobody could have predicted this and we all went through it and everything was uncertain from, for everybody. So some relationships had to be let go. Some people had to move forward. And so, um, you know, what do you say to somebody that, that had to let that go? If your relationship collapsed during quarantine, you were in the wrong relationship. You know, all that happened. Yeah, it just sped up. Right, and um, and you're always evolving as a person, and so you you've got to understand that people also can be holding you back. Your relationships yep. can definitely be holding you back. Um, what are what, what do you? Okay, so you go over how to stay out of the friend zone. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular about this? Yeah, so I'm I'm never in the friend zone with anyone. I tell everyone, I'm like, look, I really enjoy sex, and I feel that if I'm attracted to someone and they're attracted to me, we should be able to have sex, and it doesn't matter whether we're dating or not. If, some, if you want to have sex and we're hanging out, let's have sex. And I let everyone know that, and I'm, I say to them, look, if you don't like that kind of lifestyle or that kind of thinking, you don't want to be my friend. That if we're hanging out and we get drunk and we end up having sex one day, then I'm not the person to hang out with, you know, because I also don't get clingy. I'm not weird about afterwards. You know, to me, it's just like, hey, let's go grab dessert and let's have sex and then let's grab dessert again and then let's watch a movie and let's go back to our partners. I'm just chill about it. And not everybody is. And it just creates weird scenarios. So I just use that as a filter. I'm like, if that doesn't sound cool to you, we shouldn't hang. So, so friends in general, you should keep friends around you that have the same... Uh, views and share the same views is that what you're saying or is that um, just for you in particular that for me specifically yeah but in general again it's all about finding the right pattern sometimes like I've got friends that like having conflict with their friends and that's what gets them going I don't I'm someone that likes everything to be smooth and chill because in my day job I deal with so much conflict Right, I get that. So when yeah. so in the evening time, everything needs to be easy flowing. Yeah, everyone right. chill, get the wine out, watch some movies, hang out, have some wild crazy sex, wake up in the morning, and then I'm gonna you know wake up and I've got clients in Singapore. They'll be the first ones that message me or Australia, and they'll be like, okay, last night this happened, and now the drama starts. So I'm like, all right, what happened? Well, I came home and you know we were fighting, and <laughs> so so I get all my drama from everyone else's relationships. I don't need it in mine. Right. Right, right. Okay, so I got a question for you. Um, who should pay for the first date? When we're talking about dating, who should pay for the first date? Good question. Again, personal preference on everyone involved. What I like to do is I like to set the standards. So if I'm going on a date with somebody, I'll often say to a woman, uh, like, and this is for me specifically, I'll say to them, hey, are you okay with me getting the dinner and then you take us somewhere for dessert? I love that. Do you know why I also why I like that as well? Is the meal is split, then there isn't this pressure. Again, you're always talking about taking the pressure off. There isn't this pressure that you have to go home and sleep with this person because they dropped a lot of money on your dinner and you're attracted to them and now they're going to expect this. Do you uh, do you agree with that? That supports that as well. Like you have the ability to walk away. It's just friends. In the oh, evening, absolutely. if you're not into the person, then you don't feel obligated or even bad that they just spent all this money, absolutely. but that you're splitting it gives you more independence and freedom. Yeah, and, and I'm always giving them power. I, I like, to, like, it's one of the things that we teach at, like, the highest level. We, like, we give power to the other person. So I'll often say to people at the end of the night, I'm like, hey, listen, 
uh, if I like them, I'm like, look, I, I really like you. I had a lot of fun. Um, I'm saying, personally, I'm not ready for the night to end. I would love nothing more than to take you back to my place, um, have some drinks, listen to music, and then have wild, crazy sex. Um, <laughs> but if that doesn't sound good to you, you probably don't want to come back to my place. And they'll look at me like, you know, we'll be outside a restaurant. And they're like, are you serious? Did you just say have wild, crazy sex? I'm like, look, we can have the slow, passionate kind of caring kind if you want. I just, I feel like with the kind of drinks we had tonight, it's probably going to end up wild and passionate. But I'm, I'm down for either. Or you can tell me right now that that's not up for you. And the response is always the same. They'll say, I like the idea of coming back to your place and continuing to chat. I don't know if I'm committing to sex. I'm like, great. So has a and woman then, ever turned you down? Um, maybe many, many years ago. <laughs> but I don't, I don't remember. It's, it's been a long time. But again, I'm constantly giving them an opportunity to right. say no, right? Like they constantly have the choice, and they, and most women are meeting me and they know who I am, or, or you know, they Google me rapidly, and then they'll they'll come back and be like, "Yo, what's the situation? Do you really just like have sex with any woman that wants to?" I'm like, "If we get on well, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> why would we why would we not if we, you know like i know what i'm doing it would definitely be a good time for you i'll have fun but if you don't you're like and i won't even use my penis how about yeah. that <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I don't have to use my penis if, if you don't want me to like you know like as long as as long as you know what you're doing with your mouth we can make this work there's so many ways but again it's all about being fun it's keeping it light-hearted that's the magic and that's when women are like, you know what, yeah, I'm down for that. Like, I'm, And like, and again, I get a lot of women that are like, you know, I want to try having a threesome. Um, I never felt comfortable with doing it with a previous partner, but you've had so many. I would like to try it with you and your partner if you're down. And we're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay, you also, okay, so you have 10 steps. This is all on his, on his website, you guys. Uh, 10 steps to going from Tinder to the bedroom. I like mm -hmm. that. You even covered three simple texts that will get somebody to respond. And I think this will stand out for a lot of people because a lot of people will, will, will uh, try and articulate a text in order to get the other person to respond and it doesn't su succeed. Uh, so I thought that that was pretty interesting and, and, and uh, do you want to give us one of those tips? Yeah, one of my one of my absolute favorites. Um, I do this if I've messaged somebody and they don't reply, which does happen. Um, and there's many reasons why somebody wouldn't reply. But I've got a text message that I send, and I call it the zombie text. It like brings them back from the dead. Okay. <laughs> hasn't responded to. You. And um, what I do is I say. Um, hey, I never heard back from the last text message. By the way, I'll always wait like days before sending this one, okay. like sometimes even a week. I'm like, I, I never heard back to the last message I sent. I was like, so now I'm growing concerned. I can only think of it being one of two possible scenarios. Oh, gosh. Either one, you're so busy with work <laughs> that you haven't had a chance to reply, and I totally get that. Life's crazy right now. On the other hand, there is a chance that you got kidnapped by a small oh my band of Japanese ninjas, <laughs> and they're holding you hostage. On the off chance that your phone still has cell service and you need help, I need you to reply with some kind of code word that lets me know where you are so I can mount a rescue. Um, I'm hoping it's the first one. I'm open to it being the second one, and I'm definitely down to fight a bunch of ninjas to save you. Hope you're well. Message me back. And, you know, it's funny. Like, I'm at a point now where, you know, I, I meet women and you know we'll be hanging out and we'll have you know a conversation kind of like you and me are having now and you know if they're single they'll often be like you know what fuck it i'm, I'm gonna have sex with this guy like i want to know what he's like actually one of the, the weirdest experiences for me was um I, I took a woman to bed and um she's like uh, hey i, I just want to let you know i'm a virgin and I was like, whoa, I am not that guy. Like, I was like, I am so, like, listen, you don't understand. Like, you know, like, we're going to have sex. And, and the thing is, I don't break up with people either. So I'm like, like, I'm down to, like, have sex with you forever. But, like, a virgin, like, it's a big deal. You might fall in love. And, and I like that. But, like, like, I'll always date other people, blah, 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 blah. And she just goes, shh. She goes, you think I don't know who you are? She goes, I know exactly who you are. She goes, if I'm going to lose my virginity, I want to lose it with somebody who knows what they're doing who's going to show me a really good time. The fact that you don't want to do it shows me you care, even though you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> so no, you are the guy. You are going to take my virginity tonight. We're going to have sex. You're going to make it special. And then I understand that we'll be friends. We'll have sex a couple of times or whatever. And then I'm going to meet somebody who's actually going to treat me in the relationship that I want. And I was like, oh, yes, ma'am. You got it. <laughs> right? So you so, guys ended up having sex? Oh, yeah. Sorry, absolutely. Because <laughs> that's what she wanted. I, and that's what happens to me at this point in life. Like, they... You know, women approach me like, yo, let's do this. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm having such a good time right now. <laughs> and so your response is, I am not that kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I thought she, I thought she thought that like we were going to be in love forever or something. And and it was funny that she called me out and she goes, no, I know who you are. She's like, that's why it's you. <laughs> You're going to have every virgin. <laughs> 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 oh god i love it <laughs> thanks okay so you have ebooks people free ebooks people can actually Absolutely. download on your website um somebody working with you will walk away with knowing how to build a healthy relationship maintain love fun and intimacy for years to come uh you have books for men and women but you also have one specifically for men i've got a lot of male followers you teach how to go from being the man that chases women to being the man that women chase. Mm -hmm. That's available. Dating tips, um, COVID, uh, dating etiquette, this, and so much more. Um, one question, I always have three questions that I ask every guest, but I do have one more question. Um, what do you say to the men out there that are thirsty, that DM these women, that send dick pics, things like that? What would you say to men out there that are actually, I don't know if this is, if, if they are taking themselves seriously, uh, but what do you say to men like that? Yeah, like, um, the biggest thing that I say to them is you got to remember, the things that you think make you attractive um, are only things that men find attractive. What Ooh, women yes. want is totally different. And I always give the example, I'll, I'll say to them, I want you to imagine two gay men and tell me what they look like. And they're like, well, they work out, they look good. I'm like, okay, now two stereotypic, uh, stereotypical gay women, what do they look like? And they go, well, you know, kind of frumpy, kind of dressed down. I'm like, right, because women know that isn't what matters. What matters is the personality, is the fact that you can make them laugh, make them feel cared for, make them feel heard. These things all make so much more sense. When a woman is trying to date a woman online, she's not sending naked vagina pictures. That's right. not how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, so, you know, but, but dudes, absolutely, like gay men, absolutely send each other dick pics. I was like, so you got to learn to, to walk the walk of a woman and learn how they communicate and how they interact. Um, you know, I'm, I'm super in touch with my feminine side and that's what works for me. Because women can relate and you're speaking their, their language. Yeah. So I, I just show them the truth. I'm like, dude, if you were trying to pick up guys, you're going about it the right way. I was like, but if you want to talk to women, you're going to have to learn something different. God, I love it. Okay, so there's three questions I ask every guest. Where is the love in your message? The love in my message is actually for my students, and it's because I was there. I was the guy that struggled, that didn't know what to do, and I felt that it wouldn't work. And the love I have is for every single one of my students because I have never found a student I can't help. You know, 15 years I've been doing it now, and I've been able to help everybody. You even say that there's not a problem that you can't help one of your clients really to overcome. Nope, I've dealt with, I, I was teaching in South Korea with people I didn't even speak the same language, and I helped all of them. Yeah, it makes no difference to me. I can help anybody. I, I fully understand dating inside now. I know what I'm doing. Some of the best dating coaches in the world are either students of mine or have hired me to help them at this point. I just... The, co the coach is coach. And, the coach yep. is coach. Yeah, there's actually a famous YouTuber, and his coach was a student of mine. So that's Love like where I'm at at this point. Yeah. Love it. Okay, what is the lie? Probably something I'm going to guess that people tell themselves or what? Um, no, I think, I think the biggest lie is actually me because when people hear who I am, they assume I'm some kind of like badass stud. And the reality is I'm a Dungeons and Dragons playing nerd. <laughs> um, but like painting toy figures, and and it's it's the lie, the the impression that I give. You know, it's so funny because I I you know I have friends that are porn stars, and I'll often get mistaken for a porn star, and like just because of how confident I am sexually, um, and I'm like, mm -mm, no way. I was like, I could not do what you guys do. Like that just sounds painful. Like I'm just not that guy. I am a quiet little nerd, um, but I just I speak the language of women. So you couldn't be a porn star, but you completely live a life of polyamory and and all of that there's a difference yeah, it's all the sure. weirdos with the cameras and the junk you know that's not what i want like, I, want to, I want to enjoy the moment i don't want somebody to be like cut 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 no you sorry your foot got in the way you know I'm like what no stop i was i was enjoying it bro okay and what is the truth um yeah i think the absolute truth is uh, i do this for the kids and i mean that by my kids like, I love having children. I love being a dad. I've got five children. Um, and a lot of people are like, you know, oh, aren't you worried about, like, you know, your lifestyle impacting the children? And, you know, the truth is I have another house. 
and I hire a babysitter who looks after my kids and then me and my girlfriend go to the other house and that's where we date and see other people. No, no other people come into this household. This household is, we're just a family. And that's not because we're ashamed of it, but it's just because, you know, my eldest kid is 10 and right. they don't need to see random strangers turning up at my house all the time. That's a choice that I've made, but it's not for them. And, the, you know, that's the key element. And they get to grow older and, and uh, make their choices for themselves. Yeah, but, but the truth is I, I did it because I wanted kids. Like, the, my motivation was never wild, crazy sex. It was always I want to have children. Oh, I love that. Thanks. Well, everybody, that's the truth from Adam Lyons. You can find him at thedatingcoach.com. Um, I have really enjoyed this. I cannot wait for our next interview. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me.